A Muslim insurgency in southern Thailand that erupted in January 2004 has claimed more than 3,500 lives. Most of the victims have been civilians, and militants have been responsible for the vast majority of the deaths. Benjamin Zawaki, Southeast Asia researcher with Amnesty International, has published a report that claims government security forces are engaging in torture and other ill treatment of suspected militants in the insurgency zone. The report details cases of 34 Muslims detained by the police and army from March 2007 to May 2008 in southern Thailand. According to Zawaki, at least four people died as a result of their torture. Will the report encourage Thailand's government to bring perpetrators of torture to justice? And does Zawaki think there could be a peaceful end to the conflict anytime soon? What are the main findings published in the report on torture and ill treatment in southern Thailand by Amnesty International? Well, clearly in the case of, of torture in the south and the counterinsurgency, it would be the members of the Thai security forces that are carrying out, the, perpetrating the torture. Um, it's very difficult to say, to give numbers. Amnesty was able to, to interview more than 40 um, victims of torture in the South and or relatives or witnesses to that, that abuse, um, 34 of which um, are contained in the report itself. Testimonies of 34 of those, of those victims are contained in the report itself. It's always very difficult to, to correlate or to perhaps confuse the number of reported instances of torture with the amount of torture itself. It's very difficult to say whether or not the number of cases reported is actually reflective of the number of, of instances that actually take place. We know that from about the middle of 2007 through the middle of 2008, um, reports of torture in the South reached something of a crescendo. But whether or not that, that's a reflection of, of the actual um, perpetration of torture in the South or not is difficult to say. It may just be that people are, have become more comfortable with and more willing to come forward in reporting this. So it's very difficult to, to give numbers as to how many people are tortured. Um, what we do feel comfortable with is the conclusion that torture is being used systematically in the South. Um, I want to draw the distinction, not systemically. If we talked about systemic use of torture, that would, that would suggest that it's used uh, as a matter of routine. And we'd be talking about, for example, Myanmar, where nearly everyone brought in um, uh, political prisoners, etc., is tortured as a matter of course, as a matter of routine. That's not the case in the south of Thailand. We're not suggesting it's being used every time. But what we are certain of is that it's being used, um, it's too widespread, both geographically among the four provinces and also among the various security forces in the south. Um, in the number of instances, is simply too high for it to be anything other than systematic. To call it simply the result of errant subordinates or isolated instances um, would be um, to denigrate its use in some ways. It's much more pervasive than that. Who are the victims and who's carrying out the torture? Uh, the victims of torture in the South are suspects, suspects of the insurgency. Now whether or not the, the Thai security forces who are carrying out the torture um, have evidence to pull these people in and to, to detain them and, and reason to suspect them, or whether they're simply looking to, um, uh, to, obtain, to obtain evidence or to obtain information is difficult to say. But what we found is that the torture is being perpetrated by the security forces basically to compensate for poor intelligence poor intelligence, poor intelligence gathering, uh, poor evidence gathering, uh, and in many cases to, uh, to extract confessions from the people. Clearly the, the security forces are under enormous pressure to, to, to prosecute and to find those guilty of perpetrating some of these human rights abuses. But what, we, what we're finding is that the, the, the torture is being used to, to compensate for, for, for poor intelligence, basically to get confessions. Whether or not the person's actually guilty or not is very difficult to say because, as you know, people will say almost anything under that kind of, that kind of pressure. Um, and so that's, that's the main reason in the South. In fact, 13 of the, I believe 13 or perhaps 19 of the individuals that, that, that we were able to interview in the South had been, had been expressly asked to, to confess to, to, to wrongdoing a bombing, a beheading, a, a, a drive-by shooting, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and I think that's the reason why the, the security forces have, have resorted to torture in, in recent years. What kind of torture specifically is taking place? Well, when we talk about torture, it's, it's really torture and other forms of ill treatment. Um, and it varies. The most common methods have been beatings, just severe beatings. Um, interesting to note that four of the individuals um, whose testimonies we were able to collect uh, died in custody as a result of their ill treatment. So four of the 34 individuals in, in the report on torture actually were killed as a result of this torture. But in addition to beatings, um, most common are the use of plastic bags placed over people's, people's heads to, if not to suffocate them to death, at least to, to partially suffocate them and, and still fear in them. 
Um, but methods anywhere in between as well, the use of electricity, use of electric shocks, um, needles being inserted into, people's, into, into parts of people's bodies, um, and also uh, the use of simulated drowning, or what the, what the, what's often known in the press as waterboarding, essentially simulating the drowning um, of, of individuals through dunking their head in and out of, in and out of buckets of water, um, again, in, in order to force, force them to confess or to give information or, or whatnot. What do you think could be some of the impacts of torture and ill treatment by government forces in southern Thailand? Certainly one of the, the, the stated aims of the Thai government in the south is to try to win over the hearts and minds of, 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 of southerners and of, and of Muslims in the south. And certainly when you abuse uh, the rights of, of suspects by torturing them, it certainly, does them, it certainly does the government and the security forces no favors in terms of trying to, to, to win over those hearts and minds. So in talking to villagers myself, I didn't find that the individuals were, were victims of torture were inclined to necessarily support the insurgents. But on the other hand, they certainly weren't willing to support the counterinsurgency. They cer were, certainly weren't willing to, to suddenly support the, the government security forces in their efforts in the South. And so you have, again, a situation in the South where people feel like they're being pressed from both sides. They don't feel, they don't feel safe. They don't feel secure, both because the insurgents are, are targeting them or, or abusing human rights, but also because the security forces are violating those rights as well. Thailand's Prime Minister Abhisit Vejjajiva has said he will act immediately to end torture in southern Thailand and bring perpetrators to justice. In March 2008, Thai authorities told the UN Human Rights Council that they will stop torture and again bring perpetrators to justice. Is Amnesty International satisfied with the measures the Thai government has taken? We were guardedly encouraged by two things. First, on the 25th of December 2008, there was a, a decision in a post-mortem inquest into the, the death by torture of a Muslim imam in the South. And that decision in that post-mortem inquest made it very clear that he died on account of his torture, on account of ill treatment. Uh, we're also encouraged by the fact that the, the new Prime Minister, Kun Abisit, um, as, you, as you said, has, has made the right statements about condemning torture and in response to Amnesty's report, he has said that investigations will take place and these claims will be, will be investigated and that the perpetrators will be brought to justice. We're encouraged by that, but at the same time, the decision in the post-mortem inquest is not sufficient. If it's been identified that, that the imam died of, of torture and ill treatment, then what needs to happen is that, is that a prosecution needs to take place. And likewise, um, the Prime Minister's uh, statement that investigations will, will take place, those investigations do in fact need to take place. And to my knowledge, they have yet to begin. Um, and whatever decision they reach, again, perpetrators or alleged perpetrators need to be prosecuted uh, and hopefully convicted and, and brought to justice. So certainly we're part way um, toward where we need to be, but nowhere near the, near the finish line on this. Um, as you point out, it was, it was March 2008 that these statements were made in Geneva. Um, Follow-up statements by the Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister, were, were made in January of this year, um, but we've still not seen a single successful prosecution um, or accountability in the South on the count of, uh, for, for torture.